Hello adventurers, I'm Dirt Pickle and you're in my tavern. Today we have an RPG horror story in the form of a DM whose railroading is so strong that he even starts railroading all of the players before the game even starts. In this case we have all of the players confronting the DM and telling them that they don't like some of the changes that he is placing and that they have issues with the fact that he hasn't even read the manual for the game that he wants them to play but is still ignoring anything that they are saying. And to pair with that, we have a pretty interesting Italian insult that I've certainly never seen before. And I'll be curious to know if anybody's ever seen this in application before. All right, let's get into the story. The story is called GM Railroading is so strong, it starts even before the campaign begins. We have a group in which we rotate games and the GM role every campaign. So I played two other campaigns with this group and they were really good. This story begins way before the campaign actually starts. The group is formed by me, the hippie, a really nice guy that just avoids every personal conflict, Mr. Precise, a precise and ordered guy, very gentle, avoids fight but not conflict, and the GM. The GM wants to start a fantasy gritty campaign in the Viking era, the Journey to Ragnarok module for Dungeon Dragons 5th edition. It's a really cool idea so far. He's played Dungeon Dragons 3.5 before, but has never read nor played 5th edition, but still suggested that he wanted to play it as the GM. Me and Mr. Precise, we know 5th edition, started pointing out that some problems may occur while using Dungeon Dragons to play the gritty campaign he is describing. We suggest he read the manual and rule out some spells or abilities that may automatically solve the problems he wants to put into the story. For example, you can create food for the party with the Good Breeze spell. If he wants to play around with hunger, he should modify or ban the spell. The GM responds that you can take the spell, but if you do, you will be incarcerated and forced to cast it every day to make food for the people. He asks what characters we want to play. I want to play a druid, Mr. Precise, a wizard. And after we create them, he starts to ban some things. The only available race is human. You can only use the class specialty in the Journey to Ragnarok module. You can't use fire as a wizard or other spells he thinks aren't right. He literally says this, so we don't know what he means by write. Wizards can't have a book, because writing doesn't exist in this world. Okay, so me and Mr. Precise stop modifying our characters at every new rule, and ask him to just make a full list of what is banned or modified. He responds that it would be too long to read everything and make a list. Days has passed since then and he hasn't read the manual yet. Mr. Precise still wants to play a wizard, and the GM suggests that he can sew runes into his vest instead of having the book. Okay, cool. But he will have to find the rune corresponding to the spells to learn them and roll a sewing skill check, not arcana. If he fails, he can't learn spells until the next level. They start to discuss this thing. Mr. Precise thinks this is unfair. They don't really get into a fight, but after a while the GM says he can't be the GM because we're just too hostile to him. We just state the Italian saying, Clear agreements lead to long friendship. But at least the problem is avoided, right? <laughs> Not so fast. The GM changes his mind and brings his new home rules to the table, like using swords wears out the edge. I ask if hammers have the same problem. The GM responds that they don't have the problem because hammers didn't exist in the Viking era. He corrects himself right after, saying that they do exist, but only smiths have them, and they are ten times more expensive than a sword. What? After some discussion, the GM cancels the house rules and just says that he can use whatever he wants in the campaign because he's the GM. We don't agree. Of course the GM can create his world and modify the rules before the campaign start, but especially after all he is saying, we really, really would like to use some clear rules. At this point, the hippie, that has participated very little in the discussion up till now, makes a long message that says that changing all of the rules in this way is too much and repeats to the GM that he should at least read the manual for a start. Mr. Precise adds that changing random things really can change the balance of the game. The GM ignores the hippie and says there is no balance since the GM has all the power and that he's changing everything to make the world more realistic and similar to the Viking Age. We try to explain what we mean by balance, but he doesn't listen. At this point, he was also mildly insulting us. He said we were polemical, always negative and talking nonsense. So I make a long post in which I say he is ridiculous for not listening to all three of his players. If he wants to GM properly, this is the first thing to do. The other players agree on this. 
He responded by spitting out some other insults and saying that he will no longer be the GM. But wait, there's more. Mr. Precise and the GM keep fighting about changing the rules to accommodate the setting. Basically, the GM will change everything, while Mr. Precise suggests to change little things, or simply not use a high fantasy game to play a gritty, realistic world. At this point, the GM still hasn't read the manual, so I suggest to change the game. Or if he doesn't want to leave us the task to remove all the things that can break the gritty game he's describing. Or if he is really desperate to just remove all magic. It is really bad to remove all magic from Dungeons and Dragons, but this is what he was describing for days. A gritty world where people fear hunger and cold. How can we fear hunger and non-magical cold if we can just spurt out food and fire from nothing? Or create magical space with a comfortable temperature? So the GM finally decided, we will play Symborum. A Dungeon Dragons like game with low magic, but with a Viking setting. Okay, finally he changed his mind. I read the Symborum manual. I don't like it very much, but whatever. The GM asks what characters we want to do. Mr. Precise asks if he can make a necromancer, which is a school of magic exactly like the others in the game. The GM says he can do it, but if he does do it, he's an NPC. Why? We explain that a necromancer is basically a wizard and doesn't have to be evil. The GM responds that his spell sucks because they kill friends. In reality, there is one necromancer spell that targets all living creatures nearby, but he can just use it in the right moment or simply take other spells. The GM continues to make home rules and changes things up as he did in Dungeons & Dragons, but you get the idea. After I make my character, who's some sort of paladin, he tries to modify my ability distribution, my power choice, my background. Not because I didn't fit the setting, mind. He just wants to make my character one-eyed, maybe to resemble Odin, I don't know. Even the picture I want to use, he changes. And finally, my character name. Because he decided it wasn't Viking enough. To get the name, I literally searched on Google Viking names and chose from a list. I discussed some things with him, trying to accommodate what he is looking for, but I refuse to agree to this nonsense. At this point, you may ask, why do you still want to play with a gym like that? Well, this is thrilling me, and I want to see how it will end. So, the campaign starts. When we roleplay between characters, it's, it is exceptional. Even the parts of the GM are, re are really nice. Problem is that in combat he continuously gives us malice for our actions and tries to defeat us by cheating, that he called using narration, but he would never kill us. The worst part was that every event would occur in an awful railroad. Whatever you do, the most predictable things will always happen. We played the first session using a draw program, with the GM sharing his desktop. We switched to Roll20 later, and at some point he accidentally alt-tabbed and showed us some of his notes. It was a graph formed by 9 or 10 hexagonal boxes and arrows. Something like this. Encounter with the NPC. Go to the woods. Leading on to wolf attack. Wolf injures NPC. Then, return to the village. Other NPCs punish them for leaving the first NPC there. I read only the first few boxes, but I understood what it was and stopped. But everything that I read happened exactly as it was shown. I lasted five sessions. The last thing was an encounter with an invincible NPC. He healed more damage per turn that was possible to make in which I just tried to die in an old-fashioned Viking way before leaving the campaign. But apparently this wasn't his plan, so I didn't die. So I write a message to the group saying that this is not my style of playing, I'm not having fun, and so I'm stopping. The GM insults me one more time. He said he should never have accepted me as a player. I was contacted by Mr. Precise on a roleplay website and asked to join the group. And then the GM kicked me from the chat group before any of the other players could respond. The best insult was towards my character, that to his words was a panatoni shifoso, which translates to disgusting panatoni. Today I don't even know what this means. My character was basically an over viking warrior with some heals and divine protections. Other players answer me privately telling me that they understand me but will continue playing mainly because he's a friend. And there we have it. This one is definitely a horror story, I mean the railroading is pretty intense. And by pretty intense, I mean it seems like there was never any point where there wasn't a railroad. And I completely respect our protagonist for pulling out. I feel like if you're not enjoying a Dungeon Dragons game, even if it just comes down to the fact that you're not liking the style, but it's kind of bumming you out and you're bringing that energy to the game, then it is best for you to step down. And having the foresight and the drive to actually do that, I think gives a lot of props to our protagonist here. But what I really want to know is... Have any of you been railroaded this hard? Or had even a tenth of this railroading? 
and how much of a nightmare was it? And to be honest, I really, really would like to know if anybody has ever used the insult disgusting panettone before, or if you've even been called it. When, where and why and how did this happen? And if you know, what is the origin of this insult? Anyway, that's all I have for you tonight, but please remember, the tavern is always open. Good night.